Uh, Excuse me. Obviously. Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> Hello, my name is Andrew Morgan Smith, and today I wanted to talk to you about. I like how I was like, today. Today I want to talk to you about uh, what other jobs are in the film scoring field. <laughs> So obviously most of you are probably familiar with being a film composer, probably too many of you, but we often forget about the support jobs, which can be very important to the field of film composing. There's a saying that goes, if you want to get rich in a gold rush, you sell shovels, which there are more entertainment products being made right now outside of COVID obviously than ever before. There are more channels, there's more entertainment venues, there's more ways to watch video, consume audio. More entertainment is being made right now than ever before. But that's still not enough for all 11,000 members of the Composer Forum online to make a living. That being said, there's a number of support jobs which are indispensable to a film composer that could be very fulfilling and fun things to work on. And a good way to make a living, especially to market that's super saturated like film composing, is to find a niche that you can actually capitalize on or find a problem to innovate and fix a problem to solve an issue that all composers face. Here are some of those jobs. Obviously one that's kind of contentious of whether or not you really make a living wage or not. I am once again asking for your financial support. Being an assistant, helping the composer complete their actual composition tasks by doing anything from clerical work to actual score delivery, and maybe even doing some light cue writing. Great benefit of this job is you get to learn the ropes and often are becoming intimately familiar with how that composer's workflow works, which can be very valuable when you're just getting into the industry and you're really not sure how this works. You can do additional music composition. There are some composers who just really hate dealing with clients. So they really hate dealing with a director or a producer and they just would say, I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just get hired to do basically additional music work, ghost writing. And so an additional music composer is somebody who will get credit on a movie and a ghostwriter is somebody who won't get credit on a movie and may not even be credited at all on the movie. Maybe just gets cue sheet credit, <clears throat> which is kind of a different issue, but you can make a living doing these things. A music editor, which is somebody who can do everything from keeping the cues in order and making sure that everything is filed properly with that. I've used music editors who actually can help me create new cues, which I know that's kind of unorthodox, but I've had two different music editors who'll help me with that if there's a really hard time crunch. A mixing engineer, so somebody who's gonna mix scores for a living, someone who actually will take your dry stems and make them sound even better than what you are, do a mix pass, do a master pass, and just have a final polished product. You could even be a recording engineer. You could be the person who runs the studio that you record scores at. There are not a lot of mixers and recording engineers who deal in orchestra, so, if you happen to be one of those people who is pretty good at mixing and has a lot of audio knowledge, that could be really valuable to a composer like myself. That's not my specialty. Obviously, if you're a good musician, being a session musician can be really great. You can record scores in London, in LA, in Nashville. There's a scoring stage in New Orleans. You can record in Eastern Europe. And if you're close to one of these scoring stages, if you're a good enough musician, people would love to hire you. Nashville is even supposed to open up a new scoring stage next year, I think. I think it was supposed to be originally this year, but they pushed it, I think. Maybe not. Who knows? I'm not there. So maybe you could even be the start of a new orchestra wherever you live. Music contractors, they're the people who will help set up the orchestra. So a composer comes to them and says, hey, I need a 30 piece string group to do this kind of style. They say, okay, I gotcha. And they'll go and find the 30 people that they need, get them all set up, get the dates all ready. And then they get a little money up top off the total session price. An orchestrator in the old days would take short score and then realize it for the whole orchestra. They'd take rings, woodwinds, and brass, and then blow that out to flutes, clarinets, oboes, bassoon, everything down. So that way, what was originally just a chord is now a realized orchestrated part. And so now I'll deliver my MIDI to an orchestrator. They'll make choices to make sure that my MIDI makes sense. Or maybe I wasn't really thinking about specifically, oh, I want the cellos to be orchestrated like this. I was just trying to go with the feel and they'll do their best to realize the feel I was going for. The orchestrator will work in Sibelius, Dorico, or Finale, then they'll deliver those parts to another job, which is a copyist. A copyist or an engraver is a person who takes the notation software file and will turn it into a pretty nice legible music for the musicians to read because a really important part of doing sessions is having legible music. You can have a lot of mistakes that you don't catch 
whenever you're working on the stage, that costs money. If there's a missed accidental or a part that a musician is having trouble reading, that means they don't sight read it on the first pass or the second pass. Maybe it takes them longer to understand what exactly that run is. That's important stuff. Okay, Zuda, it's time for your solo. Have you looked over the music? Yeah, you expect me to play this, man? What else would you do with it? If I had a match, I could put it out of its misery. <laughs> Computer tech is a huge part of this job. My office is like 80% computers. Why does it say paper jam when there is no paper jam? I swear to God, one of these days, I, I, I just kick this piece of shit out the window. You and me both, man. I think it's lucky I'm not armed. Piece of shit. And so is most composers. So whenever I need help with my computers, that's a big deal. And it is for most people. We can't afford to be down for very long. So being able to to call somebody and say, hey, my computer's busted, can you sign in and remotely fix it or just come into the studio and fix it is a huge deal and people would pay good money for that kind of thing. They'll even pay people to build new computers, build new setups, make sure they all run and work and test them and set them up properly. A studio tech is a huge deal. Another job to do is sample programming where maybe a big composer is working on these huge orchestral parts, but they don't have time to write out each part to get it approved. So they may end up doing a score where you end up doing synthestration and that's what gets it approved. Or if they're really in a time crunch, they may end up just using your samples, but they may not have time to do that. So, or maybe they're not good enough to do that. Maybe their programming skills aren't good enough to realize everything in samples and they love what you're doing. So you may get the call to do that. Sample library development, even though it is a very crowded space right now, is another thing you could be doing. If you have an idea of, man, I wish there was a sample that did X, Y, Z. I don't think anyone's really taken that on there. Go for it. If you have an idea of something that could be new or useful and solve that problem that composers have, then that could be really great. Something that maybe for somebody who's just musically inclined and loves film scoring is to be an agent or a manager. It's really great to have an agent or manager that is a film music fan and also understands whenever you talk to them about, hey, this is how I feel about film music. This is what I'm trying to do and understand how to best market you rather than being a person who just falls into a job. That could be really valuable if, if you have an inclination to do something like that. And obviously there's music supervisors and these people get brought on board to help facilitate any kind of licensing that the movie may have. Or if it's a musical, they'll probably oversee the creation of some of these musical elements if it's not in the composer's purview. Sometimes they'll be on set if there's a band or a live performance element to make sure they have all the right parts that they're playing to, that they're syncing it and it looks correct. They'll help get music clearances. It just generally helps the project manage their musical elements. These are just a few jobs that are kind of ancillarily related to film composing. Maybe something in that list really speaks to you or you think it might be cool to look into or fun. I'd recommend checking them out. And the reality is sometimes you do a little bit of everything. I've done MIDI programming. I've done normal composition. I've done music supervising, music editing. You may just wear a lot of different hats as well, but specialization eventually is a very valuable thing. So being known for one specific thing can be very valuable to your career. So I'll let you get back to writing. I'm gonna get back to writing as well. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Um, and I'll see if there's anything to talk about next time. So thanks for coming by, bye.